What's going on everyone? It's me again, Sir Z, here quick with another lesson video for the grade 5 science class. And of course, if you are not my student, you can still use this video as reference material for your own related lesson. Do you like my hairdo? <laughs> Today's video is all about changes that matter undergoes to the, to the presence or absence of oxygen and heat. So we're focused on oxygen and heat in this video. The references used for the discussion natin ngayon are from the Science Beyond Borders for Grade 5, issued ng Department of Education, and yung Science Compendium of Notes for Grade 5 naman provided to us by our very own Tarlac Province Division. So if you're ready, let's cut the chase, buckle up, and let's get science! Changes in matter in the presence or absence of oxygen. By the way, before we continue, I want you to grab your ball pen and notebook because I want you to post this video when needed to copy the important notes for your lecture, okay? Basta pag may nakita kayong dapat isulat, isulat ninyo. Kailangan ko yan sa notebook nyo. Class, we all know what oxygen is, right? This is the most important gas element na kailangan natin para mabuhay kasi kailangan natin, of course, sa uh, respiration or paghinga. Pero pag-usapan natin ibang bagay. Wag, wag, wag tayong tao at kung ano-ano ang epekto ng oxygen sa kanila, okay? hindi sa atin. When it comes to changes, ang effects ng oxygen sa mga materials, take note, ay more on chemical changes. Three of these are the following, rusting, oxidation, and combustion. Let's start with rusting. Take note, rusting is the result of a reaction of an iron material exposed or in contact with oxygen, whether galing ang oxygen mula sa hangin or mula sa tubig. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit may kinakalawang na mga bagay na gawa sa bakal kapag na-expose sa substance or environment na may dalang oxygen. Take note that water is a compound of hydrogen and oxygen. So, hindi naman automatic na kung tubig, eh, mangkakalawang na, hindi. Kasi like I said, water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Walang problema dun sa hydrogen. Ang problema, yung oxygen. Dahil kapag naghalo yung element na iron at yung element na oxygen, magkakaroon sila ng chemical reaction na ang resulta ay rust or kalawang. And hindi kailangan ng actual water, syempre, kasi nga yung water ay gawa sa hydrogen oxygen, yung oxygen lang talagang problema. So nand, meron din tayong problema sa oxygen sa hangin pagdating sa pagkakalawang. Okay? Kaya pag nag-iwan ka ng bakal sa labas, kahit hindi nababasa, kakalawangin ito. Next is oxidation. Actually, yung rusting is a form of oxidation din. Pero para sa lesson natin, we are focusing on biological oxidation or yung mga epekto ng oxygen sa mga buhay na bagay tulad ng prutas at mga halaman. Napansin nyo ba na kapag naghiwa kayo ng apple, una puti siya, di ba? Tapos maya-maya, magiging brown yung kulay. Try nyo rin sa banana. Tanggalin nyo yung balat ng saging and then hayaan nyo lang sa hangin. Di ba? Ganon din ang mangyayari. Maluluma kahit nga hindi nyo tanggalin yung balat eh. That is called fruit oxidation or para sa mas madaling tandaan na lang, oxidation na lang. Okay? What happens is that when you open a fruit, for example, naglalabas ito ng isang uri ng enzyme. Ang tawag sa enzyme nito ay polyphenol oxidase. Nagkakaroon ito ng chemical reaction sa properties ng oxygen. So, naghalo sila. Nag-react yung polyphenol oxidase at saka yung oxygen. Kaya, nagkaroon ng pagbabrown. Combustion. In our previous video, we already mentioned both combustibility and flammability as two of the three chemical properties of matter which includes biodegradability. We learned from that video that flammability is the ability of a material to catch fire or umapoy, habang yung combustibility naman is the ability of a material to burn or masunog. Kumbaga, magsisimula sa flammability, tapos itutuloy at tatapusin naman ng combustibility. Sa combustibility, malaki rin ang role ng oxygen sa kakayahan ng isang bagay na masunog. That is because without oxygen, hindi naman pwedeng magtuloy-tuloy yung apoy, di ba? The more oxygen added, mas lalaki yung or lumalala yung apoy. Speaking of fire, let's take a look at what we call fire triangle to understand more why oxygen is important in the process of combustion or pagsusunog. The fire triangle is made up of three important components, namely si heat, fuel, and oxygen. Heat is yung init. Fuel naman is yung panggatong or bagay na susunugin. While oxygen is, tulad ng respiration or paghinga natin, is the respiration of fire as well. Kumbaga, humihinga rin yung sunog. 
all three components of the fire triangle are important. Pero pinaka-importante si oxygen. Dahil kahit may heat at nandyan yung bagay na nasusunog, basta tanggalin mo yung oxygen doon sa equation, mamamatay at mamamatay yung apoy. Imagine ninyo ang isang kandila na sinindihan. Umaapoy at may liwanag. So obviously may presence of heat. Tapos yung kandila mismo ang fuel or bagay na sinusunog. Ngayon, takpan mo ang nakasinding kandila ng mas mataas na baso syempre. O mapapansin ninyo, di ba? Unti-unti mamamatay yung ilaw ng kandila kasi nga naubusan ng oxygen sa loob ng container. Hindi na nakahinga yung apoy. Changes in matter in the presence or absence of heat. We now know about the fire triangle in its components, heat, fuel, and oxygen. We now focus on heat. It's effect to the changes a material can experience when it is present or when there is no heat. Note class that heat and temperature are different from each other. Magkaiba ang heat at temperature. Yung heat kasi is a form of energy. Yung temperature naman, degree or yung measurement or sukat ng hotness or coldness of a material. The effects of heat up to a material are the following. Drying, melting, and boiling. If the effects of oxygen are mainly for causing chemical change, heat naman ay yung physical change or chemical change. So, dalawa sila depende sa material na kasali. For example, pag magpapatuyo tayo ng sinampay, yung basang sinampay matutuyo kasi yung water magiging water vapor, di ba? Water vapor is the gas phase of water. Ang tawag sa change na ito ay evaporation. Take note, evaporation, kapag naman hinayaan natin sa init ang ice na isang solid, it will melt back to its original liquid form. Ang tawag naman sa change na ito ay melting. Take note ang melting. Kapag naman tinanggal natin ang init, ang gas na, pala, na malalamigan, babalik sa pagiging liquid. So, from gas to liquid again, ang tawag sa change na ito ay condensation. May magtatanong, Sir, paano kung masun- magsunog ako ng kahoy? Siyempre, magiging usok ito, di ba? Hindi naman ito magme-melt. Anong tawag doon? Class, yun naman ang tinatawag na sublimation or yung solid magiging gas direkta. Tingnan ang diagram na ito na, na nagpapakita ng basic different phase change ng isang matter. Kapag liquid to solid change dahil sa absence or kawalan ng init, ito ay freezing. Kapag solid to liquid naman dahil sa init, ito ay melting. Ang direktang solid magiging gas ay tinatawag na sublimation. Ang gas na nalamigan tapos magiging solid tinatawag na deposition. Ang liquid na magiging gas, ang tawag dito naman ay evaporation habang yung gas na babalik sa liquid ay condensation. Tandaan niyo yung mga terms na yan, okay? Just like what I said, the absence and presence of heat can both lead to either physical change or chemical change. We already talked about the physical changes. So let's now give examples of chemical change due to applications of heat. Actually, lahat ng bagay na naluto or niluto ng init ay resulta ng chemical change. Okay? Remember the most important definition of chemical change? It results to the production of a new substance or the substance cannot return to its original state. Halimbawa, nagprito ka ng itlog. Ano ang phase ng itlog bago ito niluto? Tama! Liquid siya, di ba? Or plasma. Pero para sa atin, liquid. Kaya nung niluto mo yung itlog gamit ang init, maibabalik mo pa ba siya sa dati niyang anyo? Magiging itlog pa ulit ba siya na buo, liquid? Hindi na. Ngayon, ibahin natin ang example sa itlog. Class, alam nyo ba or nakakita na ba kayo ng incubator para sa mga itlog? Ito yung ginagawang pagpapainit sa mga itlog ng ilang araw para mabuo yung mga sisiw, di ba? Yung lalabas silang kusa kahit wala yung nanay. So, isa rin itong example kung paano nakakaresulta ng chemical change sa matter, yung init. Mula sa hilaw na itlog, na bago ng heat yung properties na laman ng itlog at naging sisiw ito. Pwede mo bang ibalik ang sisiw sa dating hilaw na itlog? Of course not. So there you go. Once more, you succeeded in completing this video lesson and was able to catch important notes that will help you become masters of your own world. Because tandaan, everyone, knowledge is power. Let's wrap up another video, another adventure completed. Grade 5, this is Sir Z, your science teacher and explorer buddy. You've been all amazing. See you again in the next Science 5 videos. Class dismissed.